artistic activities which are offered in Vedas as scriptic activities like Karmakanda. Ninth, to instruct a faithless person about the glories of holy name. Tenth, to not have complete faith in the chanting of the holy name. And to maintain judgments even after understanding so many instructions on this matter. It is also an offense to be inattentive while chanting. Every devotee who claims to be Vaishnavas must guard against their offenses in order to achieve the desired success Krishna Prema. Once again, I thank everyone for joining the Bhakti Sangha conference call today. Let us move on to our next session. Today, we are going to discuss on advice and ad advice uh, uh, Ravan Kumbhakarna meeting as we are having, as uh, we are approaching and we are having Ram Namubi. So, so I request all uh, dear and respectful uh, devotees to come forward and introduce yourself. Hare Krishna Jyoti Mataji, Nirvrat Pranam, Sina Prabhupad ki jai, Guru Maharaj ki jai, Priti Dasi from Shalva. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Danvat Pranam, Priti Devi Mataji. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Thank you so much for joining the call and giving your valuable association this morning. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Mataji, Danvat Pranam, Sina Prabhupad ki jai, Guru Maharaj ki jai. This is Arvind Dakshdas from Chicago. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Danvat Pranam, Arvind, Arvind Prabhuji. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Thank you so much for joining the call and giving your valuable association this morning. Hare Krishna, welcome. Hare Krishna, Mataji, Danvat Pranam. Please accept my humble obedience. All glory to Srila Prabhupada and Sri Guru and Gauranga. And all the assembled devotees, Yashamati from Chicago. Hare Krishna, Danvat Pranam, Yashamati Mataji. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. All glory to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Thank you so much for joining the call and giving your valuable association this morning. Hare Krishna, welcome. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Mataji, Dandavat Pranam, All Glories to Srila Prabhupada. This is Vinta Gandharvika Devi Dasi from College Station, Texas. Hare Krishna, Dandavat Pranam, Vinita Mataji, All Glories to Srila Prabhupada, All Glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gana. Thank you so much for joining the call and giving you all, all the support all the time when I, whenever I need. Thank you so much for joining the call and giving your valuable association every day. Hare Krishna, welcome. Hare Krishna Jyoti Mataji, it is Pramiti from London, UK, and all glory to Srila Prabhupada, all praise to Sri Gurudev, all praise to Bhakti Sangha group, uh, group devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Danvat Pranam, Pramiti Mataji, all glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glory to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Thank you so much for joining the call and giving your valuable association today. Hare Krishna, welcome. Hare Krishna Mataji, Danvat Pranam, all glories to Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj, all glories to assemble devotees. This is Mohini Lakshmi from Detroit. Hare Krishna, Danvat Pranam, Mohini Lakshmi Mataji, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Thank you so much for joining the call and giving your valuable association today. Hare Krishna, welcome. Hare Krishna Jyoti Mataji, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance is to you and all the devotees. This is Krishna Kumari Devi Dasi from Raleigh. Hare Krishna, Danvat Pranam, Krishna Kumari Mataji. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Thank you so much for joining the call, Mataji, and giving your valuable association today. Hare Krishna, welcome. Hare Krishna. Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Guru Maharaj ki jai. This is Aditi Devi Dasi in Canada. Hare Krishna, then with Pranam Aditi Mataji, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Thank you so much for joining the call, Mataji, and giving your valuable association. Hare Krishna. Hare Hare Krishna Jyoti Mataji, then with Pranam Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Guru Maharaj ki jai. This is Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna, then with Pranam Shama Gauri Mataji, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Thank you so much for joining the call and giving your valuable association. You are a great support to me. I am really eternally grateful to you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna, welcome. 
हरे कृष्ण ज्योति माता श्री दंडवत प्रणमा विशेष हरे कृष्ण दंडवत प्रणाम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण राधा माता जी ऑल ग्लोरी टू श्री लोपाद ऑल ग्लोरी टू श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरंगा थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग द कॉल एंड गिविंग योर वैल्यूबल एसोसिएशन टुडे हरे कृष्णा वेलकम वेलकम टू भक्ति संघा कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल टुडे वी आर वेरी फॉर्चुनेट टू हैव हिज ग्रेस चेतन चरण प्रभु जी and he is going to enlighten us on the topic of wise and advice aravana kumbhakarna meeting hari krishna danvat pranam prabhu ji all glories to shri lakshmi bhan all glories to shri guru and shri goranga eternally grateful to you for giving your valuable time and association to us this morning and enlightening us on the topic of wise and advice aravana kumbhakarna meeting before i hand over a call to you i would like to hand over the call to respected aditi mata ji to give your brief, brief introduction to all of us Hare Krishna, over to you, Mother Ji. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisance. I'm very fortunate to introduce His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu Ji this morning, and this is a brief introduction for him. His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu Ji is a monk, mentor, and spiritual author. He has been educated in electronics and telecommunication engineering from the Government College of Engineering, Pune. He subsequently served as software engineer in a prominent multinational software corporation. Seeing the prevalent problems of stress, depression, addiction, and overall misdirection. all due to lack of spirituality he felt inspired to dedicate his life to the cause of sharing the spiritual wisdom of bhagavad gita he travels all over the world from the from australia to america giving talks on spiritual subjects in university such as princeton and cambridge and companies such as intel and microsoft prabhu ji is the author of the world's only gita daily feature wherein he writes daily a 300 word inspirational inspir inspir sorry inspirational reflection on a verse from the bhagavad gita as of now he has written over 1700 gita meditations that are posted on www.gitadaily.com and are read through daily feeds by thousands from all over the world he also answers questions by seekers on his site www.thespiritual scientist.com where his over 3500 audio answers and several hundred articles are available dandavat pranam to you his grace going his grace charan prabhu ji over to you mata ji am i audible hari yes. krishna yes thank you mata ji hari krishna dandavat pranam prabhu ji i hand over the call to you please take over hari krishna प्रभु जी कैन यू हेयर मी इट विल टेक टाइम टू कनेक्ट आई गेट्स हां हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी ओम ज्ञान तिमिरंधस्य ज्ञानं जनिष्य लाकाय चक्षुरुन्मिलतं येन तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नमस्ते नमस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधार श्रीवास गौरभक्त बृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा Thank you very much for joining today. Today we're discussing 
based on the Ramayana. So this is from the Yuddha Kanda of the Ramayana. Can you see my screen? Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. We can see the screen. Hare Krishna, are you able to see my screen and hear me speak? Yes, yes. Prabhuji. Can you yes, hear yes, us? Yes, Prabhuji. We can see yes, your yes. screen. Yes. Okay, good. So, this is from the Ramayana. Vibhishan is speaking. Tejasva kopam sukhadharma nashanam vajasva dharmam ratikirti vardhanam prasida jivem saputra bandhava pradiyatam dashathaya maithili So, he, he is completing his, his advice to Ravan and he is saying, therefore, give up your anger. Tejasva kopam. Uh, Ravan is enraged because Hanuman has just come to Lanka and burnt all of Lanka. So, Tejasva kopam. He is saying that your anger will lead to the nashanam, the destruction of both your uh, Pleasure and your virtue, sukha and dharma. This anger will destroy you. And bhajasva dharmam, he says, follow dharma, adhere, ad, ad resort to dharma. Rati kirti vardhanam. Rati here refers to joy. Kirti is fame. Rati kirti vardhanam, that will increase your fame and your joy. But, and what for doing these two things, what does it mean he should be? By this, not only will you be benefited, he is reminding him of his greater responsibility. Prasida jivema saputra bandhava. By this, jivema, they will be able to live. You become peaceful. Prasida means become peaceful. Be, be, be calm. Be cool-headed. Prasida jivema saputra bandhava. By this, your children and your friends and relatives, they will all be able to live. Pradiyatam, how, what is he going to do? Pradiyatam Dasharathaya Maitali. Dasharathaya is the son of Dashrat. So return to the son of Dashrat, the daughter, uh, the, the princess of Mithili, Mith, uh, <coughs> Mithila. So he's specifically not using the word Ram and Sita. Return Ram to Sita. He's using Dasharathaya Maitali. He's reminding him. That both, of, that both of them are members of powerful dynasties and antagonizing them can get him into a lot of trouble. So therefore, he's telling that you have to make sure that you don't create unnecessary trouble for yourself. So at any time, if you're not able to see my screen, please let me know. So here, see, our life is largely defined by our decisions. We all face crossroads. See, when there are crossroads, there are decisions. Now, normally, this is a fork. Now, some, some decisions are forks, but some decisions are far more consequential. It's almost like some decisions are complete right angles. A fork means two different directions. So here, this is different, differing. But here there is opposing. And each decision has a consequence. Where will I go at this time? And at that time, what is needed is uh, when there are opposing choices, what we especially need. We may say only this row. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, could you please make it louder? It's my request to you. Louder. My Little voice is louder, not audible. Yeah. My voice it's is audible, audible. Prabhuji. It's audible, <laughs> Prabhuji. Could you please make it little louder? Okay. Audible. Move the mic. Is it better now? <laughs> yeah, yes. we are hear you, Prabhuji. We are able to hear yeah. you. Yeah, Mataji, check your volume of the of your uh, system because Prabhuji's voice is very clear and loud. So what we need for making a decision is a vision. 
so vision means not just see what is right here but see what is going to happen here what is going to happen here a distant consequence so when we give vision that is when we can make a wiser decision see whenever there is communication we will see that there are different ways of communicating one is giving instruction the other is giving vision the third is giving vision plus we could say recommendation not instruction so instruction is direct do this don't do this and there are times when instructions need to be given <clears throat> if a child is about to apply electric wire head, don't touch it that's instruction don't touch it so tell it forcefully tell it strongly but that alone so this is sometimes we could say this is sometimes necessary but generally for people who are older who can think for themselves or at least who think that they can think for themselves mm-hmm. that vision, vision alone is not helpful just give instruction not helpful instruction means do this don't do this vision means if you do this this will happen if you do this this will happen so vision means all oh, this electricity has live wire the child is a little older older you see that big fire that is burning on the gas you see this big light all this is running because of the electricity if you touch it that wire will come in your body that that all that electricity charge will come in your body and oh, the child sees that maybe we touch some wooden object and it catches flames this is what happens oh i will never touch this so vision is more about in this particular conse- consequences so sometimes what happens is for us the consequences of doing something are very obvious if you do this you'll ruin your life you know if somebody wants to uh, somebody wants to get into a particular relationship take a particular job go to a particular place we see the consequences and we feel the consequences are terrible if we don't do this but we are convinced that the consequences are terrible the other person may not even be able to see the consequences and the other person may think we are just simply being restrictive so generally we could say for somebody who is very small or for people who are small this this is what is recommended for those who are or those who are older generally instruction doesn't work so well it is it is vision that has to be given now if we are going to talk with people who are equals or equals or seniors then it is we need to give vision plus recommendation if we use instructive mode it is not going to work because they feel that we don't have the adhikar to give instruction who are we to instruct them so here vibhishan is in the first part is giving instruction he says you are angry right now he's telling going back to the choices he's telling anger will lead you in one direction dharma will lead you in another direction this is if you lead anger then you will lose your <clears throat> you will lose your piety dharma and you will lose your prosperity you will lose everything but if you follow dharma over here then by that you will have three things is done first is you will have fame you will have joy you will have progeny your descendants will continually live your kingdom will continue living so for all of us when we make decisions we make decisions based on various factors and in general the set of factors that are important for one person may be very different from the set of factors that are important for another person so here for ravana possessing sita and enjoying sita was what was driving him that was the most important thing but is reminding 
Vibhishan is reminding him that there are other factors to be considered. And this is the last series of words, last set of verses. This is the last was last in a series of verses that he speaks. And the result of this is Ravan becomes reflective. So the chain of events over here is if you consider the Ramayana. Hanuman has burnt Lanka and just left. So if you consider Hanuman has just left. And when he has left, what has happened thereafter is that the Brakshasas are shocked and enraged, especially for Ravana's commanders. The feeling is that, that how dare this monkey come and be an upstart, destroy our kingdom like that. So they are talking the language of vengeance. Vengeance is revengefulness. You did this to us. This is what we will do to you now. So some of them are saying that, don't worry. And when Ram comes, he will have a nasty surprise. Hanuman got to us because he was uh, he caught us by surprise. But now we'll be ready. Some others say that why should we stay silent? Let us chase after him. And if you're all together, we will attack him before he reaches Ram and we will kill him. Others say that, you know, yes, Ram will come towards Lanka. He has to come to the ocean. When he is near the ocean itself, we will attack him. We will lie in wait for him. We will attack and destroy him. So they are basically all the language of vengeance. And that time, Vibhishan speaks. And that is where we are. Vibhishan is a lone dissident over here. He is the one person who is in a different voice. And he is telling, he makes various points. The first point he says is that there are four ways to resolve conflicts. As you know, they are Sam, Dham, Deda, and Danda. And he says Danda should be used. So Sam is reconciliation. Yeah, we both have shared interests. Let's try to figure out what our shared interests are and let's work accordingly. Dham is at you know, pacification. So pacification is that, okay, this is what you want. You, you have this. We accommodate you. Let's avoid conflict. Mm-hmm. And Bheda is dissension. That everybody on the other side may not be in the same, maybe may not all be exactly that antagonistic. So if they're not that antagonistic, not, not in the middle, you know, who's somebody from the other side? So if there are 50 people opposed, you just get 20 people. You know, you know, we can fix this. You can have this. You can have this. You fix it. And then what will happen is the other part will become weak. And the final is confrontation. So basically, conflict re- resolution can happen in any of these four ways. And he's saying that, first of all, don't go toward Danda as the first, first method. And he's telling, why don't go towards you? Why should you not go towards Danda? Confrontation. He gives reasons. He says that he just used three broad reasons. Just consider the promise of Ram that he alone destroyed Karan Dushi and his entire army and Mm Janastan. And second, he said, we think one of you thought that Lanka was impregnable. So he basically he used three instances of the power why Danda will not work. So power of Ram in killing Khar. We generally sometimes when we think we 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 have virtue, we are right on our side, our case will make itself, but it doesn't work like that. Sometimes even among devotees, there may be conflicts. And now we want to make the other person see sense. We think I am right. But we have to make the other person see sense. So as far as Ram's power, he says, his current his entire army was killed. And Ram, he didn't even have anybody with him. He didn't have the Yodhya army with him alone. Even his brother Lakshman didn't help him at that. Single and limited. Then second was defense. He says, defense means that you thought that Lanka was impregnable because it is an island that nobody will be able to penetrate it. 
we say that water is traditionally considered to be a, a big uh, protector even krishna when he went to when he was being repeatedly attacked by jarasand in mathura he went to dwarka and dwarka was an island so going through the water to reach a particular place to attack is difficult so now of course you know, after airplanes were if you consider modern history or in warfare history generally wars were at the borders so if there are two countries and they share a border and there's some conflict then mostly the wars were at the borders so but after airplanes and missiles are discovered then what happens is you can just go in and come back so the wars are no longer limited to the borders so this is this penetrating into beyond the borders and of course there are digital warfare me other things are there but in general the stronger the borders the safer it is so this is lanka and this drawing a rough way over here so this there's a vast ocean and he said this ocean was your defense that's what you thought but you saw that one monkey came in and he broke down the defense and then you had faith in your forces that okay even if somebody comes in that we can even if somehow somebody comes through the ocean breaks through our defenses and we have our forces to fight but he said the whole lanka has been burned this is what you could not have imagined has happened and therefore this danda is not going to work if you choose to adopt the path of confrontation and the only result of that is going to be is if you choose confrontation the only result result is going to be destruction and then what is the what is the solution later on we'll see that he will try to use dam and bheda uh, ravan will try that when he will try to send some gifts to sugriva when he will try to allure and he'll try to allure oh, angad and angad comes as a messenger later on he will try that but he says the only way you can resolve is by returning sita so return sita so this is hmm, this is what he is recommending over here you return sita that is what you are not going to lose much you have many beautiful queens with you you just return sita right now so now hanuman when it's interesting at this point we go back to this particular sequence well vibhishan is the only descendant so it's remarkable that at this point there is a pause ravan becomes pensive pensive is thoughtful and he starts thinking what should, uh, what should i do he actually suspended the assembly they have declared a all assembly of war after the burning of lanka he said i'll think about this and i'll meet tomorrow so at that point he is reflective but then what happens is that night he goes to bed and he is sleeping and like many other nights he is so tormented he is filled he's so smitten with sita that he tosses about restlessly and he has that unsated lust starts burning him from within that destroys his intelligence and then what will happen is he pale i need to have sita it is his lust that comes into the picture and at last now in one sense it's always there but during that time when he is used to gratifying himself that time when sita is not there and he has a queen he has many others but nobody else satisfies is i have to have sita then the next morning vibhishan has a private meeting hmm there is a private meeting where vibhishan goes to ravana's palace ravan uh, and talks with him over there he again tries to persuade him but while the previous night vibhishan had hope the next morning vibhishan says there is no hope at all he tries fervently to make him sense 
but <clears throat> you can see that Ravan is just not in the mood to listen. And then after that, there is a public meeting. And in the public meeting, in the assembly, there is uh, Vibhishan. Vibhishan's advice is rejected. And then there is a Vibhishan who departs. So in the later retellings of the Ramayana, uh, it is explained that how Vibhishan offers his own crown at the feet of Ravan. He says, if you think I'm selfishly motivated, then I'm ready to give up all my royal prosperity. He says, I am motivated only by concern for our family, concern for our dynasty. Please don't antagonize Ram. Please return Sita. He says, return to the son of Dashtrath, the daughter of Maithili, the daughter, the princess of Maithili. Yeah. So, Ravan just kicks the crown of Vibhishan away. And that time Vibhishan decides, I cannot be here anymore. And that's when Vibhishan leaves. So it's a, it's a further how he decides, why he decides, that's to be thought of afterwards. That's a separate subject. But let's focus here. That so we have Kumbha, we have Vibhishan who is giving advice. And we have Ravan who embodies vice. So vice is impurity. Vice is anartha. So we could say, that while this is a historical incident, this also refers to something that goes on in our own heart. Mm -hmm. say, if you consider the inner world, Vibhishan is like the intelligence. Ravan is like the mind. And the mind is often contaminated by vices. Whereas the intelligence is what uh, is the voice of sanity. And, and when this confrontation happens with the intelligence and the mind. So who wins? At one level, we can say Ravan is so foolish that he's arrogant, he's stupid, he's lusty, and that's why he is he's destroyed. So yes, that, that there is truth to that. Generally, if we consider when we are hearing scriptures, there are the, we could say there are the good guys and there are the bad guys. There are the heroes. And there are the villains. And generally, when we, we engage with any story, the story becomes more engaging to the extent we can identify with some characters. Even if somebody watches a movie, if they don't identify with the characters in the movie, then the movie becomes boring. People just switch it off. So when somebody identifies the character, okay, what, what, is, this, what is this hero thinking? What is this heroine thinking? What are they going through? What are they going to do now? Then, when there is identify, so basically, ident put it this way, man. It's identification that leads to engagement, that leads to absorption. We feel the emotions. Mm. We feel the emotions of those characters. We we undergo the dilemmas of those characters. So normally, our tendency is to identify with the heroes. Oh, if I had been there, what would I have done? And that's why when, when say in a, in a movie, some fight is going on, the hero is beating up the villain, then some people also start they are getting excited. They start to, the hero is with the heroine, they start whistling. They are they're thinking that I'll be there and I'll be doing this, 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 I'll be enjoying. So generally, we identify with the heroes. And yes, that inspires us to also. Sometimes in movies and things like that, it may just inspire people to do foolish things. Like one person beating up 100 people or something like that, that's never going to happen in real life. But uh, in general, if it's a, if it's a character, if it's a depicting a story about a noble character, then identifying with the hero helps, uh, inspires us to make good choices. It inspires, okay, this is how she, I would not have thought of doing like that. But this is so noble. This is so uplifting. This is so inspiring. This is how I like to act. So if we identify with the hero that inspires us to go do good, make good choices. And this is good. But sometimes it is helpful to identify even with the villains. Now, not because 
we want to do bad choices we want to act like that but we want to avoid bad choices so means we think now what would make me act like this what would we think we can very easily say that person is a demon and is foolish and then there is truth through that but there is not much learning from that see as soon as there is labeling you can say labeling is the end of learning don't as soon as we label something you now if you say somebody has behaved in a particular way and say that person is just arrogant that person is selfish that person is ill behaved that person is rude okay maybe but if we had to work with that person say if there's somebody in the devotee community who just maybe is 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 very manipulative that's what we feel now as we say this political person, that's the label we give to them then after that there is no okay what makes a person behave like that maybe they're political but maybe they have some concerns which are valid maybe there are some the strategy that the thirds are not right but we stop learning as soon as we start labeling so if we say ravan was lusty and he was foolish and that's the end to it but if we identify with that character then we can actually learn okay this is how the mind of a demoniac person thinks and our mind also has demoniac tendencies so so to the extent we stop labeling to that extent we will start learning mm-hmm. so sometimes identifying with the characters who are who are demoniac is also helpful so here that's why i said if we consider hanuma i consider vishan to be like our intelligence the virtuous part within us and ravan to be the mind so in this particular interaction what happens sometimes we say we have to control our mind yes we have to control our mind but ultimately we have to also live with our mind so we need to sometimes persuade our mind and persuading our mind means that we have to discuss we have to communicate so why is it that vibhishan's communication w- was with ravan was ineffective and when might our mind become like ravan or when can we ensure that the communication is not is not effective like that so i'll talk about three broad principles over here see there is there are there is intelligence and there is mind now broadly there are three possibilities the intelligence is stronger than the mind then there is a wise decision if the intelligence is weaker than the mind then there is the opposite that is the there is an unwise decision and then if the intelligence is more or less equal to the mind then there is there is confusion there is paralysis to some extent at the start of the bhagavad gita this was the situation in 2.6 in the gita what happened is that na chaitat vitma kataran no gari i don't know what is the right thing to do so one part of us saying i have to fight another part of us you know saying i can't i can't fight so what should i do so for us we could say that we want to ensure that from wherever we are so whether we are at this two or whether we are three from here we would like to go to one so if our intelligence is weaker than the mind we need to rise to the position where intelligence is stronger than the mind and if we don't know the dynamics between which is stronger which is weaker from there also we want to make our intelligence stronger than the mind now how do we do that so broadly to change the power dynamics in our inner world there are two ways to do it one is if you want to the first is we strengthen our intelligence and the second is we weaken our mind and both have their own value and validity so generally the strengthening of the intelligence comes by conviction Hmm? the weakening of the mind comes by purification so what is 
it mean? Now, conviction is the intelligence that this is right. This is what is important. So if I study, so for example, if you study scripture regularly, that will lead to the conviction of the intelligence. This is important. This needs to be done. And the purification of the mind, that happens gradually. That happens by, so this conviction of the intelligence can come by study. Purification comes by gradually by we could say our sadhana, our practice of bhakti, our, our gradual change of our desires. So in one sense, we sometimes put too much effort on weakening our mind. So weakening our mind means that I will not do this. I, won't, I should not feel like this. I won't feel like this. I won't do this. Well, the mind, is its, mind has its own conditioning and the mind is going to act in its own way. Now, in in Vishen's case, he didn't have the potential. He didn't have the option for him to actually become stronger than Ravan. He considered that option. He thought, "Is it possible for me to have a coup to overthrow Ravan? There are some people who will support me. Can I overthrow Ravan? Can I become the king of Lanka, and then I will have peace? If Ravan is sidelined, then." I can hand over Sita to Ram and avoid this deadly battle. He said, no, I don't have enough supporters. And even others, other warriors, many of the warriors who are supporting Ravan are all are arrogant like him. They are blinded by their past successes and they don't see the present danger. So they won't, they will support Ravan. And even if the ordinary citizens and other war soldiers understand that Ravan is uh, on a foolhardy, self-destructive path. Not the self-destructive, he's on a path to destroy the, destroy the kingdom itself. But still, they will be afraid to go against Ravan because he is, he is a terrible person to mess with. So he said, I can't do that. So that's why he decided, I have to ally with somebody who is much stronger. And that's how he went over to Ram's side. And he had to fight, but eventually, when he went to Ram's side, he told, he demonstrated that to Ram that your fight is not with the Asura Vamsha. There is your fight is only with this Asura Raj. That in the Asura Vamsha, uh, see, everybody has a place to stay. In the material world is very big, and there are different kinds of people, different kinds of souls with different kinds of dispositions who will be there in the world. Nityo Nityanam, Chetanas Chetanam, Eko Bahunam, Yogi Kama. The Lord allows all living beings to maintain themselves. We know in the fourth canto, when earth in the form of a cow is being milked. So it is not that only the devotees or the devotas get nourishment. Even the asuras get nourishment. So the world is, world is meant even for people who don't want to be devoted to God. There is a place for them. But they have to live within their boundaries. They are not meant to be annihilated. So now within this Asura Vamsha, there was this Asura Raj. That is Ravan. So when Vibhishan went from here to Ram's side, so when he came over to Ram's side, what he did was, he showed that this is Vibhishan coming from here. He said, he said, Oh Ram, your enmity is not with Asura Vamsha. The Asuraj and your enmity is with him. And that's why eventually, when the when Ravan was defeated and he along his followers were killed, then the it was not the Asuras were annihilated. They not the Asuras still had their Lanka. And actually more it was more of a Rakshas Vamsha, more precisely. And he said Vibhishan became their king. So the point is that there are different ways in which this mind intelligence attention can be dealt with. Just as when Vishen realized that I alone cannot fight with Ravan. So then he went over to Lord Ram's side. So for us, we have to understand what is our enemy. The mind is not our enemy. What is inside the mind is our enemy. It's like 
Lanka is not the, the whole of Lanka is not Lord Ram's enemy. So it is, is it the mind? No, the mind is not. What is inside the mind? And is not everything that is inside the mind. Some things inside the mind are the enemy. So to precisely identify the enemy, it is not that, say, say one bomb is sent by some terrorist from Pakistan to India. That does not mean, that does not give India the right to nuke all of Pakistan and destroy all of it. No. Now there are some, maybe many, who are sympathizers of say Pakistan attacking India. But no, that does not make everybody in Pakistan as an enemy. So similarly for us, our mind, it's not the mind that is the enemy. It is what is inside the mind is the enemy. And what is inside the mind has to be has to be cleansed, has to be purified. That's why we talk, talk about purifying the mind. We don't talk about eradicating the mind. We don't talk about destroying the mind. Although we say the mind is the enemy, but we never talk, we don't know, normally if somebody is enemy, we say just kill the enemy. We don't talk about killing the mind. Why? Because the mind is inside us. So there are two broad ways. The first is that strengthen the intelligence. It's only when we strengthen uh, the intelligence that even when the mind is there, the mind can be kept within some boundaries. If you focus too much on weakening the mind, then it may or may not work. Because the mind has its conditionings. And those conditionings will, over time, become unbearable. They just become too strong. So overall, to change the... This is, I'll conclude with this point. If you want to change the inner power dynamics, that how things work in our inner world, if you want to change that, the first is we get conviction of the intelligence. At the first step, we practice bhakti with intelligence. Then there is, there is absorption in bhakti. That means once we are convinced that this is important, then we will chant the holy names, we will study, we will do our puja, we will do our seva, we will, we will be convinced that I have to fix my mind on Krishna. And once there is absorption in bhakti, then the next last step because is purification of the mind. And that is when the inner battle is more or less won. And the mind itself changes. So for us, uh, if our mind is listening to us, then rather than trying to persuade the mind, we have to first strengthen our intelligence. It's just like if somebody is not listening to us, then we can say, you are a fool, I just quit. Or if you don't listen to me, I'll beat you to death. And that doesn't work so well. You have to come up with, okay, if my arguments are not making sense to me, then I have to come up with better arguments. So sometimes we just have to, okay, if you don't work with me, I'm going to go ahead. And you can be with me, you cannot, you need not be, but we have to move on. So either with you or without you, I will move on. So for us, that's how, once our intelligence becomes convinced, then with the mind or without the mind, we will focus. That means I am going to sit and do my puja, do my japa, do my seva. Whether my mind feels like it or it doesn't feel like it. I try to cultivate the connection with Krishna through bhakti. Uh, the greater the conviction, the greater at least will be our effort for absorption. And once there is absorption, then we'll experience, hey, this is not bad, this is good. When I immerse myself in the holy name, I feel peaceful. When I try to remember Krishna, I feel I feel happy, I feel joy. And that's good. And then the, when the mind sees, ultimately the mind is not our enemy. The mind has some uh, mis, misconceptions about what will make us happy. So the mind thinks that, okay, you know, pandering to, for Ramana's case, pandering to lust will make me happy. The mind may think that, oh, the more people respect and honor me, the prestige will make me happy. So the mind has its ideas of what will make it happy. So those ideas are wrong. But when by our own practice of bhakti, by our own lived experience, we show the mind that actually, don't worry. This is, you thought this is terrible and that is what is enjoyable. But this is enjoyable. Just look at this. And once the mind understands it, then it becomes transformed. So that is how, even when there is vice in the mind, 
the advice from scripture if rather than trying to persuade the mind we focus on connecting with krishna and gradually we can become transformed so i'll summarize what i discussed today so i talked communication first point was communication by various means it is the specific means that is uh, that you wish that we should use using is vision plus recommendation so we can use instruction for somebody who is very small or relatively compliant to us for those who are those who will think for themselves we need to give vision i mean don't just tell do this or don't do this but you are you understand you what is the consequence of doing this and then after that i discussed um, vision's strategy is is that i mean how what all he tried to do this four five six the four five stages in which he tried to help initially ravan paused and thought but once that lust came in again for sita then that blinded him so vibhishan was like the then we talked about the how we could look at vibhishan as the intelligence and ravan as the mind so vibhishan's words had an impact on ravan that it calmed down a little bit but when lust came in in the in the ravan big ravan's uh, craving overpower and blinded him so for us we want to change our inner dynamics so that our intelligence wins against the mind and for that to happen we focus more on strengthening the intelligence that's the first step and gradually by that the mind will weaken so in between is the practice of bhakti when we practice bhakti then by that the mind itself sees how things will work for us how what what it things will give us enjoyment is actually uh, there is a better enjoyment available in bhakti itself and that way the advice from scripture will help us to overcome the vice that is there in our heart in our mind thank you very much hare krishna are there any questions hare krishna thank you yes, so ma much prabhu ji for enlightening us and giving your valuable uh, teachings to me so throughout this class my video was not there at all uh yes prabhu ji video was not there oh somebody could have told me anyway no no it was there prabhu whatever you were writing uh, on the whiteboard was visible to us no ha, whiteboard was visible but i was not visible is it yeah yeah okay that's strange okay so right now let me uh, is it now can you see me or now also stop seeing me yeah yeah we can see uh, we can see prabhu ji it we cannot see your visible. video prabhu we see your photo and then we see the screen which you are sharing okay so this is a i think when i use a tablet with zoom i'm not using my laptop or my so it allows as soon as you go on zoom screen share it seems the video goes off looks like anyway, that's what is happening as per well and now we can see your video but the screen sharing has gone okay okay yes now please ask the question Hare Krishna Prabhu ji dhanyavad pranam aur glory to Srila Prabhupada uh Prabhu ji went towards the end when you were saying that a mind is not bad itself but what's inside the mind is bad or something on that line so yeah. when you said uh, so like you know it has some misconception about we getting happiness from things like that right yeah correct yeah so is that misconception coming from our false ego like where is it getting that i mean who is giving the mind a wrong impression about this conception, conception is coming from our past say yes. in the past we may have thought that oh, whenever i'm tired i need a break i need to watch tv hmm? and maybe in the past this watching tv did serve as a break for us it did help us but now as we have grown as we have grown spiritually we become wiser say, okay i can get a break from my break for other things also maybe i can hear some krishna katha and can hear some kirtan maybe we can do other things so in so the particular activity that the mind is prompting us it served a need in the past now whether it served it positively or negatively that's a different question maybe while watching tv we relax for some time get some relaxation but in what we watch on tv it agitates us further after we don't know that that's a different issue but every unhealthy behavior of the mind is basically a behavior that served some need in the past so maybe in the past whenever there was a conflict 
the way the only way we knew to deal with conflict was yell at the other raise at our voice yell at the other person show our anger and power and the other person becomes meek so maybe that worked at that time but maybe that's not the best way to deal with the situation now so the, in one sense the mind is living in the past it is using strategies that we were using in the past for dealing with life's challenges so it could be finding pleasure finding relief feeling a sense of power a sense of security so but now we understand that those are not healthy ways of dealing with the situation and we try to change that now. so so prabhu ji thank you that that makes sense prabhu so in this uh, where does the self ego come prabhu false ego come sorry Mm-hmm. See, not everything has to be included in every explanation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, let me put it in this way: every analytical structure is meant to explain certain things. Mm-hmm. So every so the, the the structure of the inner world in terms of mind, intelligence, ego. all that is meant to explain certain things so if you see in 3.42 in the bhagavad gita when krishna is talking about inner hierarchy indriyani paranya aur indriya bhi paramana manasastu para buddhe yo buddhe paratastu sah so there he talks about the senses he talks about the sense objects senses mind intelligence and soul he doesn't talk about the ego if you see there are different metaphors when we use the car body meta uh, the car body metaphor there's only the soul in the body there's no mind intelligence ego at all when there's the chariot body metaphor at that time there is the not just the body and soul but there is also the body intelligence mind senses in a chariot body metaphor also there is no ego so the idea is that all these are tools for understanding every analytical structure every it's a tool for understanding and at particular times we use particular particular things for understanding so i don't think we need to complicate this analysis by using the ego the ego is but still to so keep things simple don't have we don't have to bring everything to, as I, i gave two examples both from the upanishadic metaphor of the chariot body and the gita reference to 342 that uh, that we don't we don't have to bring every element into every metaphor or each every analytical structure the under the point is to understand the concept the point is not to apply a model everywhere it's just like say see every analytical structure is like a map say from uh, today i'll be driving from charlotte to root rally so then we have a map and on that map we will have okay this is the bridge this is where this will come this road will come maybe we'll have this hill over here we'll have to come to the express way now if on that map if it's a physical map topographic if it's a map for driving we don't need the information of what kind of minerals are there under the ground on in the area between raleigh and shall that's useful information maybe there is fuel maybe there is gold maybe there is something maybe there is a particular kind of soil so is that relevant information not if i'm driving so sometimes if we try to bring every single concept into every single mode of uh, 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 every single analysis we'll just overwhelm ourselves so the ego essentially is what if we consider the soul to be here the soul is here and then there is the subtle body which has you could put it here this is the mind this is the intelligence and then beyond that there is the gross body which has the earth water fire all those things are there ether this is the gross body so the so we could say the subtle thing that causes the misidentification of the soul with everything else so that is the ego so ego is i am 
So to think that I am the mind, that is illusion. To think that I am the soul, that is also an illusion. So to think that I am the body is also an illusion. To think that I am my intelligence, that is also an illusion. I'm not my intelligence. I am the soul who is using my intelligence. But some illusions are helpful to come out of the illusion. So it is better to identify with the intelligence than to identify with the mind. It's like a mother who is trying to take care of her child. When she's trying to take care of her child, at that time, if the child is crying at night, should the mother be thinking, oh, I'm not a mother, I'm a soul. No, at that time, the maternal emotions are helpful in doing the service. So we identify with that. But there are other times when the child, when the child has grown up, has become an adult, and the mother is still anchoring, oh, why is the child not at home with me? No, my mother was a role. I played that role. And now I have to focus on other things in my life. Focus on my spiritual identity. So this whole bodily, everything associated with the material world with which the soul identifies, that identification happens because of the false ego. So to think that I am a devotee, well, uh, I am a scorn member. I am this, I am that. I am a temple president. That's also an illusion. But if thinking that I am a temple president, thinking that I am a counselor, thinking that I am a preacher, that helps me to not act like a selfish person, to not act in a greedy or a lusty or angry way, that's good. We are not brahmacharis, we are not grahasthas, we are not sannyasis. But we choose grahastha ashram, we choose brahmachari ashram. If somebody is being a grahastha and they say, I'm not a grahastha, all this is just mine. No, that is the identity that is required to act responsibly. Somebody is a brahmachari, that person has to identify with that. But we identify so that we rise to a higher level. So this whole false ego concept is a complicated concept. And because what happens is there are different, there are different mis- levels of misidentification, which which will put a person in different degrees of illusion. So sometimes one particular identification is helpful to avoid a lower level, to avoid a uh, lower level action. So somebody thinks I'm just a young man or woman I can enjoy. But there's also things, okay, I'm a young mother or young father. I have, to, I have a family to take care of. I can't just go about and enjoy. I have to think about my responsibilities. The thing that I'm a mother or a father, that's also an illusion. But that is a more sattvic illusion than to think that I'm just a young person, I can enjoy whatever way I want. So, false ego is a very complex concept and that's not relevant in this particular frame of discussion. Does it answer the question? What a wonderful explanation, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Very grateful, Dandavatam. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank Are you so much, questions? Mataji. Uh, I request... A lot of questions. Ajay, Ajay Govind Prabhuji, please go ahead with your question. Hare Krishna, then we pranam to you. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Very nice uh, discourse once again. And we are eagerly waiting for you to see you in person this weekend. Prabhuji, uh, this uh, whole thing makes you know beautiful sense. Raman as the mind and you know Vibhishan coming in as intelligence and then how we have to purify the mind to uh, you know come to the level where we do the right things according to the Vedic injunctions. Uh, there are people or we can say devotees whose mind has been purified. Their actions are different from uh, you know, a set of people whose mind is not yet purified or we can say demoniac or devotees or whatever group we can call mm-hmm. it as. But in this whole uh, discussion, uh, what would be the definition of mind? Will it be like, uh, you know, uh, a group of all the desires or thoughts which a person has or propensities if we want to define how how we'll define mind in this context? <coughs> Generally, the mind is the part of us which is, is associated with de- desires, emotions, and impulses. Mm-hmm. Basically, that which makes us act Whenever we think I have to do act quickly, immediate actions, the mind is short term. The mind rarely thinks about long term things. 
it's more associated with feelings what feels good so yeah. now each of these are different desires emotions impulses so yeah. emotions are generally outside in hmm? Hmm. that means when we see something we feel something about it emotions are generally associated with the gyan indriyas then now desires are inside out hmm? that when we desire something oh i want to eat that so for example if you consider that sequence dhyato vishayan pumsa sangasteshu pajayate so an emotion can grow into a desire hey i like that that's nice that's a emotion that's delicious that's irresistible that's a emotion mm-hmm. but from there i want it that's where the desire comes so desires are also inside out uh, impulses are also inside out but impulses you could say much stronger they, they are much more like the word in, in our tradition the word we use urges urges are desires and urges the same thing well yes but not exactly urges are something we just the word urge associated with urgent sansa thought is vague we get it quickly <clears throat> very forcefully very this pushes us in that particular direction so i may have a desire to have a bigger house okay that's a desire somebody has a desire okay i want to be promoted i want to be the ceo of my company oh, desire mm-hmm. it is there and we may we, we may seek it but impulse means just i will show this person i put them in their place show them who i am so it's something which is very urgent mm-hmm. it comes up apart from that there are memories now it's interesting where the memories are stored it's a little complicated there are some memories which are more of you could say emotional memories and there are memories also of different kind there are informational memories there are you know, sometimes we may look at a person and say hey that's a nice person now why do you why do you think is a nice person well or here she well i can't really remember but next time last time when i was with this person i felt very nice about it so that's more of a emotional memory there's also a rational memory there's also other kinds of memories but the mind is also a place where the memories are stored but mainly it's these three things yeah so the part of us associated with desires emotions and impulses that is generally called the mind makes sense okay yes sir thank you bro thank, thank you so much hari krishna thank you and look forward to being there today also hari krishna take care thank you prabhu ji yes, for beautiful question uh, sukukar prabhu ji hari krishna then with pranam to you please go ahead with your question prabhu ji hari krishna chaitan charan prabhu i saw you in the uk and i was following all your classes you know it was so wonderful hari krishna nice to see you, you back in the comeback is so nice hari so this point what you uh, touched is actually i got some devotees in delhi so there is i'm not telling the name that devotees uh, not initiated but doing 16 rounds everything he is a christian now he has followed uh, prabhupada and doing properly and uh, he was in the, he, he was in the bench of getting married and uh, some girl came she is also a christian and then they were together for some time and suddenly that girl left and this boy said no i want to go for a cigarette and a drink is it why no my my totally equilibrium went off I said you are going to put more danger. Just go chasing somebody. Go to other all the four hundred rupees are going to break. No, I don't know. Give me some time. Like, give me a break. So I was not able to advise properly. He is telling I don't know what has gone wrong. So sometimes these impulses are coming. You know, uh, all a steady mind person suddenly going and falling into. So Krishna has advised so many things, but I am not able to tell what exactly we done. I am totally confused. Hmm. Yes. Sorry, I'm asking a very wrong question, but it is really coming because you are so experienced. You may be able to tell no. Okay. So two things. The first is that generally we can't uh, we can't really help someone unless they want to be helped. Mm-hmm. So it is possible that sometimes when a person tries to live a good life. and when they find that 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 good life is not working that means 
that that i tried to be a good person and things didn't work out then what is the uh, point of being a good person at all uh, just let me just simply quit it all let me give it up and do whatever i want to enjoy so there are those phases mm-hmm. like that that people come in people's lives and it's not always possible to help them at that time so it's like say suppose somebody mm-hmm. is going on a path upward like this now we hope that they go steadily mm-hmm. on the path up like that yeah Their consciousness keeps rising but life life is not like that sometimes when they're going up mm-hmm. there is normal ups and downs which always oh. happen to everyone but for some people it's like when they're down goal they may go all the way down before they come up so it's mm-hmm. just a phase and now how long that phase will last that depends on the person so what oh. what can be done is that if we find that the advice that we are giving is not really working hmm? mm. then if sometimes we repeatedly keep insisting on a person that see when we are, uh, when there is communication there are two purposes there is one thing mm. is getting the person to do the right thing and mm. the second is maintaining the right spirit in the relationship Um, so so sometimes especially if, if we focus only on the first thing you have to do this this is good for you and this will be very bad then w- all that will happen is that person will simply go away from us because mm. they'll see that this uh, they will think this person is just like this like this one uh, one track video player or movie player one track music player all that do this don't this do this don't do this. then nobody wants to be with an, in an interaction where where mm. uh, where one is always made to feel bad or the overall interaction ends up a person feeling bad so mm. so then sometimes you may just decide that some people have to learn by their experience so we mm. try to maintain as cordial a relationship as possible and mm. uh, after that the, the we also have to have faith that it is while it is our responsibility or it is our, we may feel our responsibility to guide others but also we have to understand mm-hmm. that everybody has free will and even i say if we consider yes. parents as parents it's important to guide children but mm-hmm. so those children are souls who were existing before they became our children those souls will continue to exist after our relationship ends also so sometimes if we just mm-hmm. see that are trying to get the right thing is simply alienating the person then stop telling anything to that person it's difficult just leave so you may think we are being mm-hmm. but you know there is there is a difference between this is a whole big subject i'm just i'll quickly mention mm-hmm. this that irresponsibility means that we have power but mm-hmm. we misuse it hmm? mm-hmm. we have power and we misuse it that means say somebody has the power and then they don't use it properly like i am a parent mm-hmm. and i i can control my i can do the i can get my children to do the right thing but i don't do, make them do it hmm? mm. but that is a responsibility but sometimes there is humility humility means to acknowledge i don't have power right now mm. so if i don't have power then what can i do in trying to exert the power that i don't have all that mm. happens is that mm. you know have power to break then just wait just wait shri prabhupad was he was a mahabhagavat he was a pure devotee he was a savior of his disciples and sometimes his disciples mm-hmm. fell away and prabhupad gave them good advice but they were not ready to listen what did prabhupad do prabhupad didn't just keep shouting mm-hmm. letter don't do this don't do this. no he waited so sometimes in some relationships we have to we may equate we may think i am being irresponsible but we are not just we are not being irresponsible actually we are just being insecure and we are we are insecure that i don't have the power well you don't have you don't have power say mm-hmm. when a child is say 5 or 10 years old the parents may have much more power on the child when the child is 15 or 20 or 25 mm-hmm. parents don't have the power of the child so so we have to acknowledge sometimes some people just have to go through this having said that if if we try to understand why that person is uh, 
doing something okay why do you want to smoke why do you want to do this you try to understand that then maybe that same whatever urge is there that can be fulfilled in a healthier way but sometimes mm-hmm. you just have to wait for that person so sometimes we may equate our insecurity with a responsibility so humility okay. the opposite of humility insecurity inferiority inadequacy right when i don't have humility then i i can either become egoistic i am more powerful than i am and i think i am more mm. powerful than i am there a part of me knows that i don't have that power and i'm worried i don't have that power so mm. it makes us over react so just uh, in such situation just wait it out wait out the storm it's like a storm it will come it will go that's what uh, vidura did with the trust you know with the mm. see if we consider vidura's approach with the trust and vibhishan's approach with ravana are very different hmm? vidura mm. did not go on to the pandava side because he had hope yeah. that the trashta could be redeemed and now if mm. he had gone on the pandava side and if he had been a part of active part of those who killed the trashta sons the trashta would never have listened to him afterwards but when he went mm. off then he went off on a pilgrimage and when he came back it was like oh that a disaster has happened but vidura was not a part of the disaster vidura so he could hear from vidura so he waited so sometimes we have to have learn that virtue of humility and wait okay yes but which is the is the senses doing the mistake or the mind when you know you are in a devotional life something is coming you know it is wrong and the senses is pushing you the mind it's difficult it is difficult to say generally it is some outer perception along with some inner uh, inner impression that both come together oh like okay. it's like ajamil saw something but then mm-hmm. it also triggered something inside him and both of them together was what triggered it so just like by our past karma ah uh, just like by our past karma sometimes uh, suddenly some distress make rise in our life mm. suddenly the past karma sometimes desires may also rise mm. you know that puro karma can come in various ways so when the well, desire to control suddenly, how to how to, how to, how to control that when you know that when we can't, totally wrong now. we can't we can't we can't we can't But sometimes we just know in spite of that, Ajuna is trying to yeah, so all the things still. Some, sometimes, sometimes it may just be some conditions cannot be controlled. That's that's part. But that's a part of humility. Sometimes our conditions may be too strong, and then we have to go through certain situations. But if we maintain overall favorable relationship with Krishna, with devotees, or those who are devotees, they maintain a favorable relationship with us. And that's like a storm. The storm will come. During that storm, we may do things which we regret. Uh, but but if, after that, at least we will be able to reform. We can pray that none of us face those kind of conditions in the future. But we don't know. So that the idea that uh, every time a uh, a moral failure, uh, every time a moral failure is simply because of lack of willpower, that's not always true. Sometimes a moral failure may be just because the conditioning is too strong. you know say for for a 20 year old person to tell them to control their desires is very different from say a 40 year old person or 60 year old person or 80 year old person the body is different i mean say the desires are always there but yes for for a person who is older it's relatively easier for a person who is younger it's much more difficult so there is there is a certain element of there is a certain element which is beyond our control and that's why sometimes some people just have to go through some phases and at that time all that we can do is just just wait for that phase to be over and then when that phase gets over then they can come back uh, to the right path again okay thank you very much thank you very much thank you so very much prabhu ji uh hari krishna dhanvat pranam lalita mata lalita angi mata ji could you please go ahead with your question Hare Krishna Prabhu ji Dhanvant pranam sir thank okay. you so much for your nectarian association prabhu ji so uh, i mean this is a question uh, after contemplating yesterday's class uh, i don't know if it's okay to ask or should i wait 
Yeah, if it's not related, can we talk separately? Because already we've gone quite long. Yes, Prabhuji. Can we can talk yeah. separately then? Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna, then with Pranam, uh, Philip Prabhuji. Could you please go ahead with your question? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you for your talk. And I have the wonderful uh, gift of meeting you in person a couple of weeks ago in Tampa. And uh, the last okay. thing you said to me was... Oh, yeah, Philip, nice to meet you again. Yes, yes the last thing you said to me so was... You join, stay... you join here regularly? Oh, what was that? No, you join these classes regularly also? I have joined a few, yes. Okay, <laughs> yes. wonderful. Yes. I was just going to say the last thing you said to me was to stay attached, and I have done my best. Um, oh, good. Thanks. Just very... Before my question, very briefly, uh, I had a very amazing experience two weeks ago i was sitting on the shore of the ocean with another devotee and i we were discussing many things and i asked him in spiritual life we are often going against the grain and it's often hard to know when to help people and when we're helping too much <laughs> and um this is really amazing um, he happened to say look do you see that bee on the shore and i didn't see it but he saw it and he pointed and he walked over. Sorry, I'm a little shaky uh, uh, talking. Um, <laughs> the he saw this bee, and we walked over, and the bee was the bee could fly, yet it was walking on the sand. This literally happened two weeks ago. It could fly, and it was walking on the sand. And um, we both realized if we tried to pick up this bee, it would sting us out of confusion and we would be stung and it would die because bees die when they sting. And um, we had to watch this bee in ignorance looking for a flower and the nectar of the flower go into the saltwater ocean and the waves crashed over the bee and the bee was drowning. And we had to just lovingly watch knowing that we were helpless <laughs> because if we picked it up or tried to help it, it would die anyway because it would sting us. And um, we just had to hope that the waves wouldn't completely kill it and it would remember to fly back to the flower. Um, so that echoes perfectly what you just described and it sealed that all together for me. Um, but my question um, for your talk, um, the, when reading scripture, the mind feels like it's just a delivery device and the heart you mentioned being immersed not only makes it captivating, but um, it feels like my heart when it is truly immersed that these these aren't just histories or they are literal histories, but they aren't just that. They are also happening in my heart as I'm reading them. And, and in that way, um, it feels like I'm grasping at a way to sort of take that advice on the level of the heart and then the heart sort of reverberates into the mind and I, I just wonder if that's the correct way to read scriptures i'm sorry if that's a basic question but uh, hopefully you can clarify that for me yeah firstly thank you for sharing that realization yes you know one aspect of service attitude is also to acknowledge that we all have limitations and to accept our limitations and function within the limitations that's also an aspect of service attitude so now, the heart and the mind are complicated concepts. But basically, we could put it this way that, that both the heart and the mind are the seat, are at one level, they're seat of emotions. But they are at different levels. The mind has many kinds of emotions coming with it. Sometimes we may just uh, see something. Oh, we're just walking along. Hey, that looks like a nice movie. And by time, I'll watch it. Otherwise, forget it like that. So if you consider... We all have a seat of emotions. So the superficial or the upper part of that seat of emotions is the mind. At the deepest level is the heart. When you use the word heart, we are not referring to the biological heart. Now, if somebody has a breakup and they say, if I break him, you broke my heart. You know, it's not that if you do x-ray, we'll find the organ heart being broken. 
we are referring to the seat of emotions so now the mind is also a place where emotions occur but the heart is at a much deeper level so sometimes it said that the heart is that heart which is talked about that is non different from the soul it is a part of the soul it is non different from the soul it is the essence of who we are so when we say we or we either study scriptures or we want to put our heart into something something touches our heart that means it it touches us at a deep level there are many things which may touch us at various levels so something is to, some we watch some comedy shows and that's entertaining we just titillates our mind a little bit we have a few laughs but if there is some deeply moving story we hear some scriptural pastime in which we are completely immersed or uh, so then it touches the heart so for us the we could say the heart is essentially the locus the locus the, the point of our deepest emotions of our, not just emotions you could say go beyond emotions you can go also to and values what is it that we value the most actually we have emotions associated with that but emotions in some sense are transient they come and go but there are things which you value beyond how we whatever emotions we have so that's the heart and initially we start experiencing emotions first at the level of the mind even when we say some to come to a temple and then we come to a spiritual place hey this nice vibes about this place i feel good over here initially a, a non discerning person may feel yeah okay when i hear the spiritual music that's nice but then i go and uh, go to my home and hear some some non spiritual music some movie music that also feels nice but after some time it starts getting you know the spiritual music there's some the spiritual music is something different about it so it starts awakening a deeper part within us it starts reaching a deeper part within us the deepest part within us that is the heart so yes scripture gradually we want it to touch our heart and to transform our heart the seat of the seat of our deepest values we want it to change over a period of time okay Thank you, Prabhuji, for a beautiful question. Yes, last, uh, last please question. Please go ahead, Prabhuji. Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranam, Pramati Mataji. Please go ahead with your question. Uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you, Mataji, for letting me ask a question. Prabhuji, I got one question that when you are, uh, when you, when you are leaving our body, uh, what goes with the mind? it's only with mind or also the other levels other things also go with the mind what do you mean by other things uh, which other things like are... like we have a gross body and subtle bodies so gross body will we are not going behind. to take it so, 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 subtle yes. body goes with us subtle body goes yes so what includes in subtle body prabhuji what what includes in subtle bodies i mean Okay, basically, there's a mind, intelligence, and ego. Mind, so ego. Three, mind, intelligence, and ego. Those three. And what? Okay, and probably what about the Garbhodaksha, Vishnu, and causal body? Causal body. Causal. Oh, that's a little complicated concept now. See, there are different ways in which. the inner world is analyzed like i talked about a map now the there could be a there could be a physical map of uh, say north carolina or america there could be a there could be a top of a political map physical map may show here there's a river here there is this there is that political map may show more of the boundaries there is where this district ends where this state ends then we could have a natural resources map You can have so many different kinds of maps for the same area. So, like that, our inner world is anal is mapped in different ways in different analytical schemes. And in the eleventh chapter of the Uddhav Gita, uh, Krishna tells Uddhava that the sages have exhibited creativity in analyzing Sankhya in different ways, and through their creativity, used for gaining spiritual understanding, pleases me. So, the the Paramatma is not exactly uh, the paramatma is always with the soul and the paramatma of course goes with the soul that 
it's not karuna daksha vishnu it's expansion of karuna daksha vishnu at the the shiro daksha vishnu is paramatma so mahavishnu in the bodhisattva vishnu and shiro daksha vishnu yeah so shiro daksha vishnu goes with us and the karuna sharira that is a completely different even in the yoga is not one like in the bhakti tradition there are different bhakti there is gaudiya vishnu tradition there is shiva vishnu tradition like that even in the sankhya sankhya yoga frame there are different ways of analyzing there are different traditions so the bhagavatam does not go so much into the karana sharira the karana sharira is some ways like the sukshma sharira the subtle body but slightly different so it's a different way of analyzing things so that the that is something which is not so important for us but it's just a different way of analyzing so karana means cause so it's called the causal body so those elements of a subtle body which are associated with the future events happening and the future desires coming so you could say the karan sharira is like the subtle body but it's it's somewhat a different way of analyzing so what about the garbhadakshai garbhadakshai vishnu prabhu ji yeah the parmatma goes with us parmatma definitely goes with so, us so that is garbhadakshai vishnu shirodakshai vishnu is goes Shirodakshay. with the mind and so shirodakshai vishnu not with the mind with the soul with the soul so the mind need to die so mind need to die or mind goes along with the soul and paramatma oh the mind goes along mind does not there's no dying of the mind a mind is the mind is uh, with us it's only when we become purified completely i mean living material existence at that time we leave the material mind behind and that is so when mind, we go with, with the so mind is sorry so mind is used so for the is, so mind is used yeah, for the is, for, uh, for the uh, devotional cultivating the devotional mellows prabhu ji yes this is the soul around can you see the screen yes prabhu ji so the soul a subtle body the gross body and now next to the soul is the super soul so the super soul we are showing it over here but basically it's like um, there is no geographical or physical location super soul is transcendental so at that the gross body falls behind and then the soul along with the subtle body they go they go to the next body hmm? so this is this is the fall at death the body is going to fall and then along with the soul there is the super soul so this is the super soul so both of them go so the mind is used for various purposes the mind is basically a tool for perception just like with, uh, with, with our eyes we can watch a movie we can hear krishna katha we can come to temple and here we can read a read the mundane novel we can read a spiritual wisdom book so like that with the mind also the mind is a tool just like the eyes are a tool the mind is a tool with the mind we can think we can dwell on mundane sensual things with the mind we can dwell on spiritual things and either way uh, so the spiritual growth is about directing the mind in a healthy direction instead of directing it towards worldly things we try to direct it towards spiritual things okay so thank you very much shri ramachandra bhagwan ki जय जय प्रभुपाद की जय जय गौर भक्त वृंद की जय जय थैंक यू प्रभु जी थैंक यू वेरी मच हमारे लोकेशन पर राधे राधे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम कृष्ण हरे हरे